What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a short discussion video just talking about why I review games after 100%. And while these are all subjects I would say that I've probably mentioned elsewhere, I just thought it would be fun to kind of collect my thoughts on it, put it in a video, and that way I can have something I can point people at. But if you're new to the channel, what I usually do is review games after 100%, obviously. But in addition to that, I play just a ton of CRPGs and longer RPGs where getting 100% on those games is a real pain sometimes. And if this is the first video of mine you're watching, to clarify, 100% means a lot more than just the achievements. It also means things like seeing all the endings, all the story options, etc. And while I would say the quality of the achievement list tends to vary game to game, some games have a pretty robust achievement list where if you've gotten all the achievements, you can pretty safely say that you've 100% a game. Some games, however, have a very lackluster achievement list where actually doing things like seeing all the endings, etc. takes longer than getting the achievements. But to be clear, I do usually include the achievements. Now, I suppose the first and most obvious thing is why not do just regular reviews, right? Well, truth is, I actually do some regular reviews, but typically speaking, these are on uh, older games that you can't reasonably 100% for some reason. Or, for instance, if they don't have an achievement list, I'll usually just do a regular review. Because while I don't really feel like achievements are a great hallmark for what 100% is, they are nonetheless a very easy public way of conveying the thought. So older games that don't have achievements, I'll usually just do a regular review for, as opposed to beating the game half to death. But moving on from there, I think the single most obvious reason I do the reviews after 100% is merely because it helps the video stand out. It gives me some credibility for what I do, which is reviewing games a lot of the time. But as somebody who focuses on a lot of CRPGs, I actually do a lot of other things besides just reviews, like putting out guides, etc. All of that stuff in mind, one thing you really have to pay attention to when you're trying to do YouTube for a living is, you know, the algorithm. And while I honestly hate even talking about it, because for the most part, if you follow my channel at all, what I'll do is put out a video just about every day with the occasional exception. And I, generally speaking, don't pay too much mind to the algorithm in terms of like the types of videos I'm putting out, etc. But it would be naive to sit here and say I do this for a living and I don't pay that any mind at all. And reality is putting up a review after 100% gets noticeably more views on a game than something that isn't. And combine that with uh, opening up my Steam profile to the public and making all that stuff as visible as I can make it. I actually spend a lot of time answering questions about this. And honestly, I think that has done wonders for my credibility on the subject. But to be honest, the shortest and sweetest answer to this question, that is to say why I review games after 100%, is, is pretty much just because it gets more views, people click on it more. And as someone who was trying to break into that space, kind of when I started doing this, it was just a very easy way to set myself apart from other reviewers and simultaneously taking advantage of something I usually did anyway. Which brings me to probably my last major point for this, and that is simply that I don't feel like I've gotten my money out of a game until I've actually 100% it. So while I do occasionally get games and things for free to check out, etc., Reality is, I still spend a lot of money on games and reviewing this stuff. Now, I make enough money off of YouTube that it's kind of a non-factor, and I get to write off my game purchases on my taxes at this point. But long before YouTube even, that is to say long before I was making these videos on YouTube, I didn't feel like I'd gotten my money's worth out of a game until I had 100% it. And just to give an idea of how much I spend on games these days, literally on the 10th of February when this is going live, I've already spent about $250 on games this year. And while, yeah, technically that's for work, at the end of the day, I don't like spending my money on something if I don't feel like I'm getting value out of it. And that's something that I've always approached video games with, obviously a bit more so now that it's my primary income. But even before that, it was something I always did, was try to get as much out of a game as I could, especially back when I was only buying a couple games per year tops. So that combined with the fact that a review after 100% again just tends to get more views and be more instantly noticeable. I've managed to turn something that I was kind of already doing anyway before this was really a big focus of the channel, turn it into a very big part of the channel that people seem to really enjoy. But there you go guys, just kind of a short discussion video on the ins and outs of why I review games after 100%. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if I sounded a little weird throughout this video, I was sick most of today with what I can only assume is food poisoning. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.